Uh, I don't know whether you heard what I said before there, um, Fax. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Aurora Light Sky. It's wonderful. Uh, Michigan Steve. Yes, I do know Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. In actual fact, uh, he wrote the foreword for my book, uh, Two Minds, One Choice. Been a very good friend of mine for many, many years. Not that I believe in what he's saying. In actual fact, when somebody in Canada emailed me about 13 years ago, they said to me, Grant, you're in Victoria, Melbourne. Do you know Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall? And I emailed back to this woman and I said, yes, as a matter of fact, I have heard of him uh, on the internet. And when I googled his name, he was actually living about two miles from my address. So one Saturday morning, I got up and I walked to his house. I walked from my house in Watsonia to his house in Greensboro. And I knocked on the door and went inside. And from that point on, we had a very, very powerful friendship. And uh, I went with the intention of setting him straight. I went with the intention of setting him straight. Because according to my Christian belief at that time, according to my inner knowing at that time, he had a deception working within him that I wanted to help straighten up. And in actual fact, uh, I brought him a bit of knowledge about the Fibonacci series of numbers, which he hadn't heard of, which was amazing. And uh, later I found out that the Fibonacci series of numbers is also a distortion and a control matrix and a spiral to siphon energy. So it's interesting. But Brian and I uh, had been very good friends, regardless of our differences, for a very, very long time, over 10 years at least. And uh, I still communicate with him off and on to, till today. Uh, I do think there are some things a bit sus about his story, because I also know three people who claim to be Jesus, which I suppose can't all be true, right? They cannot all be true. Uh, there's a guy up in uh, New South Wales or Queensland in Australia, uh, A.J. Miller. He also claims to be Jesus. Uh, there's another guy here um, in Victoria. He claims to be Jesus. I won't name him on cam because he hasn't told me himself, but I've heard it through another source. But there's many, many people in the world who claim to have a Jesus consciousness or a Mary Magdalene consciousness or some other super powerful spiritual identity consciousness. Many, many people here on the earth. S Sorry, hang on. I'll just do it again. I'll Why don't you start from there? I know you missed me there. I'm just coming back on the mic. Can, uh, can you hear me now, you guys? Where was I up to before? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, where was I up to when I dropped off? Can you tell me? Was I, was I just saying that there are other people in the planet who claim to have some connection to a spiritual reality such as um, Mary Magdalene, John the Baptist, Jesus, uh, some famous patriarchs or some famous people in the Bible that, you know, many, many people on the earth claim to have some descendancy from some of these amazingly powerful super people, you know, and uh, I don't know what it means for this, but I, I know that it means that all of us have a sense of self-identity importance. In other words, we're all very, very powerful in the mind of God. And uh, there's also interfering uh, control matrices that run operations or holographic inserts into our self-identity that just distort us and destroy our self of true identity, our source of true identity. So yes, uh, Michigan Steve, I do know Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. In actual fact, I made a few YouTube videos with him. And if you wanted me to, I could put some private interviews with him up on YouTube that I've never aired before. Uh, if you wanted me to, Michigan Steve, I could put up some personal YouTube videos with Brian Marshall and myself that have never been aired before that just show some of his attitudes and things. 
but also he's a very beautiful man and uh, maybe a little bit lost in some degrees according to others thought but he may be very very true and powerful in his own integrity so I can't degrade a man or lift him up but I can show you some evidence of what you want to form your own opinion around okay look uh, there's many many ideas about Brian I've known Brian personally I went to visit him nearly every day for about five or six years uh, we've discussed many things most of the things we discussed were inventions you know electric magnetic motors uh, perpetual motion all of those kind of uh, apparatus and stuff like that you know like new inventions he very brilliant man got the highest IQ I've ever seen you know uh, he's wonderful in a lot of ways but I still think there may be some form of delusion there I can't say uh, and I wouldn't say against him but everyone thinks that they're marvelous anyway it, most people think they're marvelous most people think they have something flowing through as a potential I wouldn't like to limit anybody's idea of self-identity provided that it's peaceful and loving and whole and, and good and it, it adds into community in, in a wonderful way you know uh, there are many many constructs of mind that control things here anyway I hand over the mic there to you Michael come on up Yeah, I, I know. I just want to know about him. I want to know, because uh, he's treated me awful. Awful. Absolutely awful. And, uh, and I know who I am. And uh, I did some research. And with what I know now, I mean, I've run his numbers, uh, his name, and everything I've, I've done on that. I've talked to uh, his wife there, Janelle. She's Asherah. She calls herself Asherah. A-S-H-E-R-A-H. -H. And uh, you look up Asherah and uh, you know, there's a lot of information. Ancient history of Asherah. Uh, it shows that she was the consort of the ball. That she was his mouthpiece. And they're on YouTube a lot. And Val uh, Sir Mullet, basically the Queen of England. And I know that Brian worked for that establishment for some time. And uh, I just there's just something, something there. He's, he's something. I don't know what it is. But you know, it does say in the Book of Daniel. When he gives Daniel the scroll, he tells him to eat it, but the sweets of the taste, but the bitter in your stomach. So, that's kind of how I'm looking at Brian. No, they tried to get me to uh, come over there and, and, and visit him. I, I even went to the extent of going, actually going to the post office, checking into a passport. And it was too long, it was too much. They, they, the paperwork guy, how long it takes to get it, was a pain in the butt. But, uh, no, I, 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 I'd love to go to Australia because I would go and see him and, and look at him in his face and I would know for sure. I would know. I, I've done this. His, his crest has blue in it. He says he's not Jewish. He's Jew. He's, he's got Jew blood by him. They were rebellious people. They were the ones that carried the seed of the serpent. Uh, hey, Steve, do you mind if I add you to my list, brother? I might get in contact with you. In actual fact, I might send you some uh, private... Um, I just added you then, okay? I just might add some private uh, YouTubes for you to watch if you want to watch them. Just some of the stuff that, between Brian and I, you know. Uh, some of the attitudes. Something I've never posted on YouTube. Some of my YouTubes have mentioned him and I have got Brian in some of my YouTubes. So if you Google Grant Barlow, Brian Marshall, you see maybe one or two of our YouTubes in there. 
me talking with Brian. You'll see his face and everything else and uh, what he's about. But uh, he's the most amazing guy as far as putting anything together scientifically, uh, mathematically, pictorially, graphically, creatively. An amazing guy to work numbers. Amazing guy to have thought of creation. You know, um, at the same time, when he's had very peculiar problems within his own physical and psychological being, I've gone to his house and I've healed him, you know. He's asked for healing and I've healed him and he's been healed. So there are some levels of his mind that can't sustain his body and psychology, you know. Other parts of his mind are very brilliant. So, uh, you know, we all need one another, I know. But uh, those are just some of the things, you know. Those are just some of the things, so, yeah. Okay, hand over. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I'm just uh, watching. So, I'm watching. You know what I mean? I'm watching. Because I'm going by what the scripture tells me. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So, I'm just going to keep on watching. I'd also like to mention here, Steve, that uh, the scriptures, even though they're very much trusted by uh, many religious um, forms, you know, uh, I would like to point out that there are some distortions put in deliberately, and this is witnessed through history. I don't know whether you've ever heard of a guy called Tony Bushby. I'll write it in. Tony. Tony Bushby, um, he's written a few books that actually depict how some distortions have come in through the teachings of the biblical uh, expression, and there's many, uh, many others, you know, um, many others who talk about things like that, and we can't always trust any source, we can't trust any source, but there are many, many people who have a conjecture, many people who have a different point of view. Many people who write according to historical records, so they say, and we know that there are many things added and subtracted from historical records and everything else that can add and contribute into the authenticity of Christ. Uh, I know that Christ is a reality, not so much through the biblical teachings, but through my own experiential inner reality when I called upon the source of life. When I called upon the source of life, Christ became my reality. Uh, Biblical teachings can enhance that, and I also see distortions that could distract and pull people away from the belief in that and experience of that. So, you know, like, there's many, many things in this world. Many things in this world. And uh, I like to say, it's your own investigation. It's your own determination. It's your own acceptance. It's your own initiation. You ask the questions, you know. Like, if I gave somebody a question to ask, and I said, hey, Joe Blow, ask this question of God. And Joe Blow asked that question of God. Well, Joe Blow might get some sort of answer, but Joe Blow didn't think of the question. I told him the question. It's about time Joe Blow thought of the question. You see what I mean? And when Joe Blow thinks of the question, Joe Blow will get the answer from the God flow. So Joe Blow, God flow, he know, all know, and that's the, that's the answer. But if some other source stimulates you to think of that well you're not continuously thinking about that you've got to be the one who's continuously thinking about the source of life to come and reinstitute the wholeness of life within yourself you know you, you can't be continually reminded of what to do because it's not your idea you've got to have the idea yourself and that's where my awakening came i had the idea myself i had the idea myself i can write about it prolifically and unless somebody else has had the idea well maybe nothing happens but if they do have the idea something will happen <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean and that's what I'm saying so uh, when you have the idea something will happen and I had the idea 
that I wanted to know God, whatever God is, even if God's in, you know, some idea that's not real. I want to know what reality is. I want to know what I am. What am I? What am I? And I'm asking whatever knows what I am, what I am. And uh, it's coming to me in great volumes of the book, great volumes of the book, you know. Uh, and so from that asking comes my answer. And I realize that the answer was there even before I asked it. Therefore, the separation caused the answer, and the answer is that which is not separated, and so forth. Answer and question is not even a part of it, because in the state of all knowing, uh, you don't even ask a question, and no answer is required. You know it. But in separation, you need to ask, and that's where it comes. You're asking, you're hearing, you're hearing the word, and the word is informing you of what you already know, the word is informing you of what you already know. You see? So anyway, hand over the mic now. Hand over. I've been recording this, by the way.